Welcome back to the channel. We're in the Langdale Valley today and we're in the Central Fells. So we're going to go up Pavey Arc and more importantly, we're going up Jack's Rake and then we'll pick up a few waypoints in the area. Right, let's have a look at it. Starting at the National Trust car park next to the new Dungeon Gill, we start the ascent. The climb follows Stickle Gill, which offers us some lovely waterfalls on our way up. We follow it all the way to Stickle Tarn, where we get our first view of Jack's Rake. Wainwright describes Jack's Rake as just about the limit that the ordinary common or garden fell walker may reasonably be expected to attempt. Let's see if you agree with him. We'll continue to the summit of Pavey Arc, take a short walk over to Thunacar Knot, then travel to Loft Crag and Pike a Stickle. Once we've collected these four Wainwrights, it's a steady downward descent as we work our way to Stake Pass. Once eventually reaching the pass, the pass will take us on a steady down to the valley floor, which is a good staple route. Once down, it's a long valley walk where we can reflect on the walk and look upward to Pike of Stickle and Loft Crag on our left, which dominate the valley. We're in the National Trust car park, so we're starting off here and we're going up to Stickle Town to start off with and Pavey Arc. Alison's with me today. There's Alison. <laughs> She'll be taking a few photos on the way. So if you want to check out her Instagram, then I'll, I'll put it in the description. Okay. Around this area, actually, they have quite a few of these uh, and around the car park as well. It just gives you a bit of history of the area. Going into autumn now. So the temperature's dropped a bit. I can really notice today. Uh, when I went out last week, it was about 20 degrees, and today it's more like 11, so definitely get into the autumn conditions. Well signposted this, so I went up to Stickle Gill. And Stickle Town is up here. Got a few people out. accompanied by Stickle Gill just at the side so you can probably hear it because there's a little bit of waterfall action on this route. There we go. Nice little bit of interest to the walk. You like a waterfall don't you? <laughs> The ascent's pretty continuous. We started about 100 metres where the car park is, and then we head up to about 500 metres where the tarn is. Just a little bit short of that. But, you know, steady one for today. And then we can have a look at Jack's Rake from the tarn. Should be an exciting one. Jack's Rake is a grade one scramble, and it's uh, my first time doing it. Quite a few berries on that rowan tree ready for autumn. So there is a bridge on this one and if you want to actually just go up the top, work along, then come down here on the other side and cross over, that's a shorter route for you if you wish it. I did that one with my son when he was uh, about seven years old. Over the back then on this bridge. Oh, look at that. Nice little valley shot. Langdale Valley. And that's up towards the, up towards the Wainwrights pub. <laughs> I only know my way around by a pubs. <laughs> when we get up, Jack's Rake is a grade one scramble. Probably be like your fifth grade one scramble, wouldn't it? Would you consider yourself an experienced walker? I think so. You think so, yeah? I've had a few people asking me of late about filming gear and clothing. So in the description, I'll put a link in there and it'll take you to my Amazon site. And that's all the stuff that I recommend but I'll put a gear list in as well in the description so you can see exactly what I'm using. Mm -hmm. 
There you go. Fantastic view there. And just behind it. <laughs> right, but that's the forward view as well. So look at that. Nice waterfally approach. See, it's just a little bit touching the tops there with the cloud, but we're doing Jack's Rake today, so that's really the purpose of us doing this today. So we'll see how we get on up there. A little rocky in some places, but good old stable climb. Very nice. <laughs> there you go, classified officially. Very nice. <laughs> Steep in places, isn't it? I said steady though, the rock is uh, dead firm underfoot. So pleased with that. I think this will be alright on a dodgy day. <laughs> not nice, not nice, no. Not nice, it might be slippy. Look at this, there's a lumpy rock. But this is called something, what's it called? If you know, pop it in the comments. Speckled rock. Speckled rock. Okay, we'll call it speckled rock. If it's, not, if it's not named, it's now called speckled rock. <laughs> it is a big climb, but you have got the view behind me, so <laughs> when you want to stop, have a little breather. You can have a look at that, it's fantastic. It's rugged, about 100 meters to go up here. Then we'll be at the town and then we'll see Jack's Rake just opposite. Uh, Jack's Rake itself is a grade one scramble, but there's a bit of stuff to do on the way. The back here, a little bit streamy. <laughs> there we go. Gotta get across, but the boulders are quite big, so it's all right. Got quite a look out as you go across there. Just got a Harrison stickle. You're tracing the river all the way up, and it is these fairly big boulders, so it does look rocky but it's quite easy to navigate. Wow, look at that. Just opening up to a new landscape now. So, just about to hit the tarn. We're here. So that's Pavey Arc <laughs> ahead of us and show you Jack's rates when we get up to the town. There it is then, Stickle Town. If you stay at the uh, new Dungeon Gill, this is where they get the water from for the baths. If you're wondering why your bath is brown, because it comes from here. I'm gonna cross over the back to the other side on this. Nice easy big boulders. Show Jack's rake as we're looking at the uh, cliff face here. We're going to the right of the tarn and um, we're going to go to Jack's rake which is just there you can sort of see it tracing up. Right it looks a bit scrambly let's have a go. This is a grade one scramble so you know perhaps a pair of gloves I've not brought any today but Alison's brought hers because she's more sensible than I am. <laughs> Just get through this. It's 
bit ominous today with the cloud on the top. Jack's rate goes from 560 metres to 680 metres. Bit of a climb up. You got through that boggy bit okay? <laughs> it's quite boggy at this end. Uh, another stream to pass over, then we'll be getting there. Whip! Right, so a few people, <laughs> so a few people kind of walking near it and then turning back today. Uh, I don't think they want to attempt it in the clag. I think I'll be all right. <laughs> I think I'll be all right. Doesn't look busy today, this. <laughs> so we're just gonna kind of head our way up there. And that's the look back to the town. Lovely. walk up to it's pretty obvious a little bit of a path and you can see it in front uh, it is a grade one scramble but you're sort of in a bit of a groove when you're going up for a lot of it so it's not uh, too bad in terms of risk level because you're inside a gully really but you know it is for people with a bit more experience it's a bit steep coming up and you've got this kind of loose-ish stuff so it's a bit on the scrabbly side I'm still on the approach but it is getting steeper now for sure so <laughs> it's looming up ahead of me as they look back down there it's pretty steep this really Here, as we get to the top, we've got a bit of a split. This at the side, to the right, is easy gully. You can go up there, it looks pretty easy. <laughs> but we're not gonna go up there, we're going up Jack's Rake. So, we are up there. That's our job for today, so it looks pretty steep, to be honest, it's near the top. Quite narrow. Yeah, narrow as well. Let's give it a go then. Here we go then, so I'll show you the whole of Jack's Rake, hopefully, as we go up. <laughs> So excuse me if I don't talk to you for a little bit as I'm going. A last look out over the tarn and down to Windermere. Is it Windermere? Alison think <laughs> thinks everything's Windermere. <laughs> right, get onto this. Uh, it's a bit smooth where the boots have been up it. But there are some decent handholds. Three points of contact when you're scrambling. So two feet and a hand or two hands and a foot. Not your knees because you don't want to slip with your knee. Cause you some damage. Right, I have to keep swapping my hands around because I'm trying to do this with a GoPro. I have to put it down on occasion. Uh, right, pop you there a minute. There you go, you stay there. <laughs> I'll try and get up. It's a tricky one, isn't it? You keep hold there. Oh, yeah, you need them longer legs. Should have put one this morning. The rock's fairly stable. I'm just looking for decent finger holds as I come up. So I can sort of pull myself up a little bit. So I'm really inside the crevice a bit now, and this is a bit wet. So I'm looking for decent hand holds. There's less obvious ones, but there are a couple of finger holds to the side. Get my foot in a good place. Right. <laughs> what I'm doing as I'm coming up here is I'm making sure I've got a definite good foothold and a definite good handhold before I do anything. 
Let me start shifting my weight. Right, need out this part. Gotta just pop you down there again, because this is wet, so I need all my limbs. There's a little platform here to stop on and get a breather and then we'll attack the next bit. So I'm going to do it in three phases. So up to this rocky platform, a little bit again, then we can stop, then it narrows out and we're up the uh, steep gully. It's a lovely view out though. Onward then. <laughs> Let's get up phase two. Up. That's okay as we re-enter the next section. This is what I've got next. I'm going up here and that's sort of a platform to stop on there. Then it's the third phase of that gully. Wainwright says in the book that there are like a series of small obstacles to get over as you go up. Uh, get a good handhold there. Whoop. There we go. That's the next little bit done. And it is best to think of it in stages as you come up. So this is the last gully to go up. It's that little tree at the top. <laughs> I'm going to go slightly to the side of this because it looks a little bit easier. Right, so here I swing myself into it. Well, it's uh, so far so good. They are quite stable, the rocks on this going up, but there's a few that have obviously come down from the top. Let's get these. Nice little platform to get on. There we go. You all right? I say gloves are probably <laughs> an idea if you're going into autumn. I've not brought mine though. I need to get my winter kit sorted out really because this bag's a bit too small to be carrying all my layers. So I'll have squash sandwiches. <laughs> it's just the odd bit where you have to make a decision which way to go. But if you keep stepping out of the actual gully, to get over the larger rises. It's possible to do it that way. I haven't got super long legs, so <laughs> I have to do what I can. You are even little aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> all right, that's all right. There's quite a few things to grab. Right, get in there. Definitely, uh, we could obviously fall backwards, but you'd be out pushed to fall off because, well, from where I am anyway, because I'm sort of inside it. Uh, it's too steep for me to get that bit. So again, popping out the side again a bit. And judging by the smoothness of this, a lot of people have made the main, same decision. I'm going to pop that down there again because it's a uh, two-handed job. It's really tempting to put your knee down, but I know it's a bad idea, so I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but it's tempting to do it so you feel a bit more stable, but you don't want to catch yourself if you slide off. Pop you there a minute. Mm. 
I'm not trying to film with the GoPro in my hand all the time because that would be ridiculous. <laughs> it's too steep. So definitely safety first on this. So excuse the odd slightly wonky angle. <laughs> I'm fairly happy with that. Go on this inside bit, because I think it's manageable. And then we're at that little tree. Here we go. Hmm. <laughs> Good foothold. Whip. <laughs> Tip my bag. Alright, so what's a good handhold? That'll do. Feel like I'm nearly there. That's it. You stuck? You alright? Can we come get you? What? Don't know how I'm going to help you. Why is that? Right, you up? Yeah. Okay. Ouch. That's all right. Let's try it out. Give me a hand. Making rules. Oh, God. All right. Yeah, that was tough. Right. <laughs> right. So, Alison just got stuck in that little wedge <laughs> where I caught my bag as well. So, if you've got bags like this, they generally have a handle on them and you can pull up. That's not what they're for, but you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> do it if you want to. Handy just drag you up the mountain face. <laughs> Fine. Anyway, we're up now. A little bit to do and then we're at the tree. Oh, we're at the tree now. Oh. We're at the tree. Worth saying, we came up um, this side here, but you can go round there if you want to. It's a bit more open and you probably won't get your bag stuck. We say it look never. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Uh, it does narrow there. Alright, so relatively easy past the tree. And we're up. There you go. What do you think about that then? Well, I was talking about <laughs> Yeah, no, I think. Is it as good as Lord's Rake? Um, yeah, because of the, I think it's better than the, the ground's not moving. No, the ground's not moving. Yeah. Yeah, Lord's Rake, quite scrabbly. Uh, and it is as you go down to it as well. Alright, this is uh, pretty much done. Anyway, we're on an open, more open bit now. So we get up and then there's something to contend with in a minute. Oh. Anyway, if you're enjoying the video, ask me if you click on the like, that shares out to more people. And if you want to see more of this madness, then <laughs> you could just click on subscribe and you get the new ones as they come up. If you're in the archives like this, so Lord's Rake is in there, then there's quite a few ridge ones on there. Uh, Snowden up Crig Cribcock and then Blencathra on the sharp edge. For now, we're continuing up this one. Adding it to our list of grade one scrambles. Just to mention, for this kind of thing, we have got radios. You can't rely on a phone signal in the Lake District, so I've got radios in case you need to get anybody out, any assistance, but hopefully not. We're now on the edge 
for this bit. I've got this scramble to get up there, looks a little bit hairy. Then we are nearly on our way. Definitely more of a climb this one. Let's get some good handholds. Right, thoughts. That's a good one. <laughs> no, I mean this particular, yeah. Yeah. And get your foot over to this side. Mind your bag again as well. Can I just pull you up? Yeah. That's the one. One. If you've got a big bag on, it's slightly more problematic, but you know, it can be done. That's okay. So, <laughs> that was a bit steep. This here is a little plateau again, and you just got to think of it in stages because it's quite a quite a task in one go. There you go, next bit done. That's a nice view out, look at that. Lovely. Right, now this looks actually... <laughs> yeah, it looks better in reality. If you're looking at it on the uh, TV, it probably looks really steep. Just because it is. <laughs> Let's get it finished off then. This bit's okay. Uh, still steep, mind. I'll show you what I'm looking at in a second when I get somewhere safe. No. So just work our way up here. When I was doing the crib, got one. <laughs> I separated with Alice and she went off somewhere else. And I didn't put her back on the film again. And it had to, <laughs> someone in the comments going, what happened to Alison? Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> you didn't show me off? No, I didn't show her off, nothing <laughs> happened. Uh, we just went different ways. But that's why we have the radios as well, because sometimes we agree it's best if we do something different. Right. Maybe there. Ah, now, in the books, Wainwright says there is one significant obstacle, and I guess this is it. <laughs> It's a massive rock in the way. So I can see from the finger wear that some people have been up there. Some have gone around that way, so I'd wonder what we was on about, but yeah, that's it. In uh, the olden days, if you were going to Lord's Rake, there was a big boulder there, but it's long since fallen down or crumbled. So it is no more, even though it was there in Wainwright's day. Okay, and that. So I actually ended up going the other side of this rock behind me because I couldn't get a, a foothold. And it's a bit tight for bags in it yeah. going through there. So yeah, went around the outside. Anyway, getting there now. I think we are getting towards the top of it now. But I personally have not been up this before. So, new territory. If you're thinking about scrambling and you've not done a grade one scramble before, I wouldn't really come up here because <laughs> it uh, needs a bit of experience, I think, before you dive into this. So, there are some easier ones around in the lakes you can do. Again, <laughs> you find yourself on this platform, which is about, I guess, seven foot wide, so it's all right. Have a breather again, then try the next ascent. 
this last bit, it looks okay to me. I mean, easy to say, but <laughs> it's easier than what we've done. So let's just continue to head up a little bit. Careful. Oh. Right, getting there now. Uh, I have actually pulled Alison off a couple of these sections. Because <laughs> you only got little legs, haven't you? <laughs> I think the rest of this is quite a hopefully routine-ish wander up. As soon as I've said that, I'm up against a, a tricky bit. Here we go. Get my knee up. Not resting on the knee though. It's getting a bit windy, but it's a lovely view out. It's a bit up and down at this bit, so it just descended slightly and then we're heading over. But you can see the path because it's uh, reasonably well worn. <laughs> Very smooth tree root. <laughs> a few people clinging onto that. Okay. So I guess we're over here. Judging by the wear on the rocks. So we're going to get a foot up here, and then a bit of a pull up to there. And just keep going. Wow. It's longer than you think this. Getting a bit windy, so I'm just having a, a lean in to the cliff face. I think this is the last bit now, and then we're at the top. It's looking okay. Seem to be two ways up, judging by the tread on the rocks. Just keeping hold. Definitely 100% worth bringing gloves, especially if it's a little bit chilly. You can see the wind effects up here, so we better get this complete. Well, and that is us up Jack's Rake. <laughs> volcanic slab work at the top. Wow, what a view out it is from here. Hello. What do you think of that? Harder than you thought. Yeah, tricky in places. This is looking back. So you can just see, we're gonna head eventually over there to Harrison Stickle, but we'll just get to the top of Pavey Arc first. 
warm now. All warmed up. Snow. <laughs> <laughs> this looks uh, barren. <laughs> Let's get up here. There we go then. I guess this wall's here so that silly people don't go over it. <laughs> there we are then. Jack's rate complete. That was fun. <laughs> the uh, top of this. The top's over there. You want to go up the top of it? Oh, yeah. All right, then. All right, we've got the top. Right. Well, yeah. Now, Pavey Arc is the Wayne Wright, of course, so we're going to just go and claim the top and then we're heading over there behind me. A few slabs here, and we're not that far from Bow Fell. That equally has like slabby top to it. There's a wall pretty much all the way around this. And we're just heading over to the summit. It's just a little bit of a distance over. Very grippy rocks these. That's our landscape. I'm at the highest thing, so I'm going to say it's the top of Pavey Arc. There we go. <laughs> Although all trails are saying it's over there somewhere. Which it might well be, but whatever. Now, in the Western Fells book at the end, there's a little footnote. I'll say footnote, there's a few pages. And Wainwright talks about other places in the lakes that are not the peaks. And he names six places that are exciting situations and he names things like Lord's Rake in there, uh, Sharp Edge, Stride and Edge and he doesn't name Jack's Rake but there is a footnote at the side and it says really because they're not for walkers it's a place for men with hair on their chest so you know like Alison so <laughs> it's uh, it is quite a hairy place that and I'd put it in more of a climber bracket than those other ridge walks or scrambles, as I put it. Now we're up, just going to go over to Sunakar Knot, which is a Wainwright. Uh, it's a bit weird because Pavey Arc, although it's been given a whole section and it is a Wainwright because it's in the book. It's not actually a fell, it's a cliff. So <laughs> it's a bit unusual. But the thing it's a part of is Thunakar Knot, so we're going to go over there now. And that is the principal fell, really, of Pavey Arc. Thunakar Knot is just here. Pavey Arc is just over there, so you may as well just go and get it. <laughs> if you're looking for Wainwrights, it's just there. Alison's not been over this part before, have you? Third time in... No, not time. Yeah, so... We're going to pick up this one. Pop it in our Wainwright bag. That'll be number 76 for you, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> Done more than me. I've only picked up about five this year. <laughs> New ones. It's a bit windswept up here. Wainwright says... It's uh, <laughs> not exactly a look of this mountain. There we go. It's a little bit boggy up here and a bit stony. This is it. Lovely. Climb it. Oh. Right, right, we're over there now. Whee! That's a few hours. We're just at the sort of edge of the cloud base here. Getting a bit windy now. Just going over to Harrison Stickle. It's a short distance away. You can actually see it. The wind's getting up to about 55 miles an hour this afternoon, so I'll get these, then start heading our way over to Stake Pass and head down there. This walk over is fairly short, but it is also a bit boggy underfoot. Just see there. I don't know the costume change. <laughs> Just trying to uh, keep the wind off me a little bit. It's not going to rain today, it wasn't forecast anyway. But I carry this anyway. 
if you never know, it's the Lake District. So this walk over, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can't actually see what you're walking at, so probably about half a K or something like that. And then we'll be there. So we'll head around the edge of the valley and then we're gonna go down the stake pass at the end. Then nice little valley walk to finish. End up at the old dungeon gill. Now that is a good little look down there. That's cool. Some sheep there taking it easy. Lovely. Just out the wind. <laughs> Excuse the wind on the mic, a bit windy now. We're just going to Loft Crag to get that one. And that's another way mic for today. It's just up here ahead of us. Not too far away. Harrison Sickles there, but we just decided to miss it out in the end just because of the wind and the time the walk up here is a bit rocky <laughs> see there under my feet but well, it's only a short one a little bit of a climb up it's a bit of hang on to your house time here <laughs> it's very windy There's the top of Loft Crag. Hiker Stickles just here in front of us. So a short walk over to claim my next wave right. Just see the height on this is, you know, <laughs> what a drop off that is. Crazy. Hiker Stickles, you can just see it from miles around. <laughs> You're sticking up there like a big pudding. Right, let's get over to it. So we've been up the other side there, worked our way over to Thornscar Knot, then Loft Crag, over to Piker Stickle there, in front of us, then a bit further to the end of the valley and we'll get to the Stake Pass and then head down. As you're coming down here, then actually Wainwright favours this side of the valley to the other one, so on this other side there you've got the Bowfell area, so it's just steeped in a bit of cloud there and then you've got the band which comes down here takes you nicely to the old dungeon gill pup <laughs> piker stickles always highly visible in the landscape just really dominates and sticks up and it's a good one to go on top of there you go so even from this side it really is a bit of a notable top from the valley, it's really obvious, and that's how you can really tell you get into Langdale Valley because that is looming up. It's quite an easy path coming over to this, uh, not too boggy, a little bit rocky, and there's our <laughs> lovely stairway up. So, you've got these really generous steps going up you can actually ascend this from the valley floor but that'd be crazy <laughs> so this is much easier there's a lovely staircase going up after the excitement of jack's rake it's nice to see something a bit more <laughs> planned wind's really got up for us today and i knew it was going to because i've seen the forecast this morning Last bit then, it's just a bit of a hands and feet job up here. 
right, let's go. Looks all right though. Smooth rocks. Because there have been a few boots up here. But it's certainly after this morning's fun on Jack's Rake, it's uh, not that bad for us. There we go, final few feet. Here's the top. Wow. Coming off here, and that's our four Wainwrights done for today. And we've got Jack's rake in as well. To finish the walk, we're going to carry on along the edge of the ridge uh, so we can take in the valley the whole way. That's going to be pretty good. Then we'll get to Stake Pass, head down there, and then we've got a bit of a valley walk, joining the river as we work our way towards Dungeon Gill. This last section, it's fairly straightforward. It's a little bit sort of rocky as we head across the top, but it's pretty flat and you just gradually descend all the way until you get to Stake Pass, uh, which isn't too far away. The sort of furthest tarn over there indicates the top of Stake Pass. More of a puddle than a tarn. <laughs> right then, the furthest puddle over there denotes the top. It is a bit of a puddle, honestly, because I was I was over there on day three of the uh, Cumbria Way, which we did in the summer. So I'll put a link in if you want to see that. It's a bit of an epic journey from Alverston all the way to Carlisle, uh, five days. But this is definitely one of the best days on that. A lot of people just do days two, three and four. And this bit with Langdale Valley up to Keswick, that's day three. So good old walk, about 15 miles a day. Day two is a bit shorter though. But Alison didn't do day three, did you? I got the bus. <laughs> you got the bus. So we need to do day three again, just to make sure the whole thing's been completed for you. I don't want you missing out. Once we've reached the valley floor, we'll have a bit of a reflect on the walk. And I'll tell you what I thought of it today. But yeah, the bit I'm going down to now, it's uh, the top of State Pass. It's quite bobbly across the tops there. And if you're going straight across it, then you can get through to Rostwaite from there. Nice, easy down. Then we're getting to this. You can tell it's marshy because there's a few little puddles there, according to you. Yeah, puddles. <laughs> Some bodies of water on the top. <laughs> We've picked up about four Wainwrights on this walk and it would be quite easy to extend it and pick up six or seven if you wanted to because Langdale Valley is littered with them. So I'll put this map in the description but also if you're doing Wainwrights just have a look around the uh, general area because you could just extend it a little bit and pick up some more if you wanted to. So it just depends what kind of walk you want to do. Right, so we're just going to get to State Pass now and then we'll head down. So we're coming down and going to go to the uh, left. But if you're going to the right, that's Langstrath Valley down there. And you've got uh, at the top Eagle Crag and Sergeant's Crag there. If you carry on across the top here, you could go across Rosset Pike there and then come down the other side if you wanted. And that's another way in right, so should you wish it. But we're not going to do that. We're going straight down here. Joining the path now, this will take us down to the Stake Pass. 
might be just me, but steak pass. It always makes me want a steak pasty. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Oh, Greg's on the way home. Oil <laughs> fell just ahead of us there, and then you can kind of come down the band here at the side. Coming off that one, Stake Pass goes from about 430 metres down to about 180. So it's quite a walk down, and it's a bit of a walk up if you go the other way. So it's quite well known for people that are walking in the area, but it's a bit of a hefty climb. I always find this area a bit weird because of the bubbles. Look at it. <laughs> Funny, aren't they? Yeah. I know, it's really weird. We're heading down to State Pass and you can just kind of tell by the way the end of the valley is gathering that that's where all the streams are. On this side we've got uh, State Gill because it's State Pass <laughs> and then we're going to head and follow that down the river. So that is it looking forward and we're going to just work our way down there. This is the top bit of State Gill we're just getting across here. So, just going to follow that down the pass so we get to the valley floor. And it's a straight walk, pretty much admiring the valley views. Quite the drop off down in Slangdale Valley. You can just see sticking up there, we've got Piker Stickle. Dominates the valley, really. Although it's a long way down, the path does kind of wind around, so you're not doing it like straight down like a bobsleigh run. It's uh, reasonably gentle. It's all right for you, isn't it? Yes. Yes, good. Alison's got wonky knees. <laughs> As you're coming down, you can't help notice like a stickle just there. It's dominating. You can actually reach it from the valley floor, but I don't think I'd want to. <laughs> it looks a bit, a bit tricky. We're getting down to the flat stuff now. So probably about 30 meters further to go down. And then we cross the bridge, do the valley walk, and we're back to the pub. If you enjoyed the video so far, then it helps you if you click on the like. And if you want to see more of these, then just click on subscribe and you'll see them appear in your feed when they come up, uh, which is on a Sunday. Okay, right, let's uh, finish this off, get across that bridge, get down the valley, get the pub. I'm down to the split now, and I call it that this. This is State Pass that we've just been up. So that's that way. And then if you go into Esk House, then that is that way. So if you get up there, um, you'll find your way to uh, Alan Craggs and Bofell is over on that side as well. And then you can come down this end to finish and back to the pub. All the water gathers down here in the valley and State Girl is going to turn into Mickledon Beck as it works its way down towards the old Dungeon Gill. This valley walks about two miles. Uh, it's referred to as Mickledon and it's just a steady path as we go along. So, did you think about the video today and what did you reckon? The walk? Good. good walk, you enjoyed it? Yeah. Good. And what did you think of the uh, Jack's Rake? It was harder than I expected it to be. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's quite hard. Uh, it's not really for beginners, that one, but it's definitely worth doing if you've got a bit more experience. It's quite fun. Just work within your own limits, though, because it's a bit, uh, bit of a tricky climb.
think they've repaired this one because I'm pretty sure we came down here and this was a broken gate. Was Remember it? it? Yeah, I do remember it. And it was just on the side there, wasn't it? Yeah. It's like, what they've been down and fixed it.